Hi, I'm Bob. We will complete computer exercises from ten to thirteen today. Let's do computer exercise ten. The estimated equation is as follows. For part two, we will fall into the dummy variable trap by introducing perfect collinearity. If we include all three dummy variables in the model with the overall intercept, for part three, holding experience fixed, a guard scores two point three more points per game than a center on average. The difference is statistically significant at the five percent level against a two-sided alternative with a p-value of zero point zero two one. For part four. The t statistic for the coefficient on marital status is zero point seven nine, and its p-value is zero point four three one. There is no evidence against the null hypothesis that married players are not more productive after holding position and experience fixed. In part five, we add the interaction term between marital status and both experience variables. We do an F test for the joint significance of the three variables involving marital status. The F statistic is one point four four, and its p-value is zero point two three. There is no strong evidence that marital status affects points per game. For the last part, there is no much change when we use assists per game as the dependent variable. The coefficient on marital status is still not statistically significant at the ten percent level, with a p-value of zero point one five. Let's solve computer exercise eleven. The stator command summarize answers the first question. For part two, we run the simple regression model. Households eligible for four o one k are estimated to have. Eighteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-eight dollars more financial assets than those not eligible for the plan. The difference is statistically significant at the one percent level. In part three, we add age and income in the quadratics to the model. And the coefficient on four o one k drops to nine point seven o five, suggesting that eligibility increases assets by nine thousand seven hundred and five dollars, holding age and income fixed. It is still statistically significant at the one percent level. In part four, the interaction term between the plan and the demand age is statistically significant. While the interaction term involving the squared demand age is not, my answer to question five is no. They do not differ too much. It is nine point seven zero in part three and nine point nine six in part four. The former is the average partial effect of the plan on financial assets, while the latter is the partial effect at the sample mean of age. They are similar. For part six, we generate five dummy variables first. Then we include four of them in the model to avoid the dummy variable trap. The estimated equation is as follows.
we do the F test for the significance of the family size dummy variables. The F statistic is 5.44 and its p-value is 0 0.0002. The family size dummy variables are jointly significant at the 1% level. We reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative that family size significantly affects financial assets. The last part is about the child test. The child F statistic is as follows. The sum of squared residuals from the unrestricted model can be obtained from five separate regressions for the five family sizes. The sum of squared residuals from the restricted model can be obtained from Park 6 because that regression assumes all slows are the same. It is 30,215,207.5. We run the five unrestricted regressions and obtain the sum of the squared residuals. 29,985,400. The number of restrictions Q equals 20. The degree of freedom in the five unrestricted model is 9,245. The child F statistic is 3.543 and its p-value is 0 to 3 decimal places. We reject the low hypothesis that the slow coefficients are the same across different family sizes. We conclude that households with different family sizes follow different models. The four values command executes the loop five times. Let's find answers to computer exercise 12. Among the men, 29% are classified as having above average looks. Among women, 33% are classified as having above average looks. For the whole sample, 383 people have above average looks and 155 people have below average looks. More people are rated as having above average looks than below average looks. In the second part, we run a simple regression to test whether the flexions of above average looking men and women are the same. The T statistic is 1.48 and its p-value is 0.07 against a one-sided alternative. It implies that females are 0.04 higher in the flexion of above average lookings than males. The difference is statistically significant at the 1% level against a one-sided alternative. 
The estimated equations for men and women are as follows. For men, those rated as having below average looks are about 20% less than average looking men. Women with below average looks are about 14% less than average looking women. The more accurate estimates are minus 18% and minus 13%. The null hypothesis is that there's no difference in wages between the below average looking and the average looking. The alternative hypothesis is that the below average looking unless the p-value for men is zero to three decimal places. The p-value for women is 0 0.036. The wage difference among males is statistically significant at the 1% level, and the difference among females is statistically significant at the 5% level against a one-sided alternative. For part 4, there's no convincing evidence that women with above average looks are more than women with average looks. The T statistic is 0 0.61 and its p value is 0 0.27 against a one sided alternative. The wage difference is not statistically significant at even the 20% level between women with above average looks and women with average looks. For part 5, the effects of the looks variables do not change in important ways. For both men and women, the above average looking variable is still not statistically significant at any conventional level. The coefficient on the below average looking variable is around minus 10% for both men and women. It is still statistically significant at the 5% level against a one-sided alternative for both men and women. For part 6, the restricted model has 14 expenditure variables. The sum of squared residuals from the restricted model is 261.2. The two unrestricted models give the sum of squared residuals of 249.8. The number of restrictions Q equals 13. The degree of freedom in the unrestricted model is sample size minus 20A, that is 1232. Plugging in the elements of the Chow statistic formula, we have the Chow F statistic of 4.23 and its p value of 0 to 3 decimal places. We reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative that slopes of the regression function differ across men and women. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.